Well, welcome students. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about cancer, cancer biology, and we're going to kind of put it into context um, of what we've already learned about mitosis and meiosis. So I'd like to just have us begin by kind of reviewing a little bit about the cell cycle so that we can kind of remember what it is and, and how it fits into this idea of potentially meiosis or mitosis. And so I have these three charts here um, with the question of which one best represents the cell cycle. And hopefully as you go through them, it becomes immediately obvious as to which ones are not right. And so they're all um, color coded. You can see that the G1 is labeled um, in this light blue um, on these two right here. And so as we're kind of thinking a little bit about the cell cycle, we know that we have to have that G1. And then the G2, of course, is the one that's labeled in this gray, which is on chart C and in chart A. And so we know that, of course, the cell cycle has to have those two gap phases, so that automatically excludes chart B from being a correct response. We know that chart B cannot be an accurate representation of the cell cycle because it has no gap phase. Um, in addition, this kind of bright orange piece that you see here is the S phase, which is actually where it's able to replicate some of those DNA. And so we know that this one is not a good answer, chart B, because it has none of those things. It doesn't have interphase. So we've clearly ruled out chart B as being a potential answer. But then as we compare chart C and chart A, we kind of think about the differences. Well, they both have G1, which is where we usually enter the cell cycle, and then it's followed by S phase. And then, of course, it gets into this G2, which we have here, and then it leads into prophase, which we can actually see right there. But the interesting thing is, is this one only has these kind of five pieces of the pie, whereas this one has several of them. We think about well, what are these extra pieces that chart A doesn't actually have. And those actually fall into the realm of these additional pieces, prophase 2 and metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2. That's all of these things, which hopefully you can remember was part of meiosis. Um, and so that's clearly not an example of the cell cycle, because meiosis is this idea that you're actually starting out somewhere maybe with one cell here, and as you go through the process of replicating the DNA and dividing, you actually have two divisions, which is how you end up with those gametes. So clearly that's not the cell cycle. The cell cycle, by having that name, implies that it is going to continue to go around and um, start where it ended. That's not going to be the case with chart C. So clearly chart A is the appropriate response, and we can confirm that because it has interphase, and it also does not have those extra pieces that has that extra um, division, which is what happens in meiosis. So now we have an idea about what the cell cycle includes. So we can start kind of asking our, ourselves some questions about what could go wrong in the cell cycle. And so clearly there's some pieces, um, some, some pictures, some drawings on the bottom of what happens in the cell cycle. And then of course there's some actual photographs of what happens in the cell cycle up top. And so we can go kind of piece by piece. And so as we mentioned, we start out, if you go into the cell cycle, in interphase. And of course, interphase includes G1, S, and G2. And so the couple things that could happen, that could go wrong, is of course we know in those gap phases that that is primarily growth. So the cell could actually fail to grow, and that could be one thing that could go wrong. Um, you could actually have organelles or other macromolecules within the cell that actually fail to replicate. And so those are things that could go amiss. Um, in addition, we know that interphase also includes S phase, which of course is the primary um, point of replication of DNA. And so if we have some either failure to replicate or some error in replication, that could be a major um, stumbling block for the cell cycle's completion, successful completion at least. Um, so that's um, many things that could go wrong. If we then are able to successfully move through interphase and get into prophase, we think about, well, what actually happens there? Well, we know that chromatin is actually what makes us sister chromatids, but in this particular case, maybe they don't actually condense, because in a normal functioning cell, they actually would condense into these chromosomes so that they can move appropriately to different parts of the cell. But one thing that could go wrong is that they don't condense. Um, in addition, you can clearly see that the spindle, these kind of fibers that you can kind of see in this picture, maybe those don't actually form. And that, that could be um, a really big deal if they don't actually form and then attach to those little kinetochores or the, um, the centromeres is, is where they tend to form. Um, in addition, you can clearly see that um, you can see the nuclear membrane in this picture, but then it is, is disappearing in prophase. But one thing that could go wrong is maybe the nuclear membrane fails to actually um, uh, to uh, fragment and, and disappear. 
But again, if you go through those successfully and you finally make it to metaphase, there's other things that could go wrong. We know that in metaphase that we have the centromeres um, and all the chromosomes line up on that, that center plate. And that could actually fail to happen. Maybe they don't line up, or maybe there's just one that, that doesn't line up. Um, or maybe those uh, microtubules could, could fail to be pulling them um, uh, from the centromeres themselves to allow them to line up. But if you're able to successfully go through metaphase, then you make it to anaphase. And of course, we know that, um, that in anaphase, things could go wrong. We've already talked a little bit about um, non-disjunctions, where we know that they don't get pulled to the wrong to the right side of the cell, and they're on the wrong side of the cell. Um, that could actually happen where they fail to separate, um, or they don't separate appropriately. In some cases, as you can clearly see from the drawing, the, the cell actually elongates, and maybe it's not able to do that. Um, or maybe you could have some unattached microtubule that could fail to lengthen and, and push apart to, um, to, to have those chromosomes go to the appropriate side. And then finally, some, some things that could go wrong in this last couple phases, telophase and cytokinesis, is again, we know that the nuclear membrane does need to reform after the chromosomes have gotten to the right spot, and maybe that could not happen. Or maybe the, the chromosomes could remain coiled up as, as chromosomes and not actually uncoil, um, and so that could actually happen. Um, maybe you could have the spindle remain intact. Um, that could, could be something bad. Or, of course, in cytokinesis, maybe you have no actual um, uh, splitting of the cytoplasm, and then you actually end up with essentially two nuclei in one cell. So there's many, many different things that could go wrong um, that, that can, and they do in some cases. And so we have to be able to have some checks and balances to be able to avoid this in, nel in normal cells so that we can avoid some of these, these things that could have potentially very, very dire um, outcomes, if you will. And so we know that, of course, there's many, many cells that have to undergo this process of um, reproduction through the cell cycle. And so they have to go through all of these steps many, many times um, throughout the lifetime of an organism. And so there is some potential for some of these things to go wrong. Um, but as we think about all these multiple divisions that are clearly happening in our own cells, there's things that, that do go wrong and don't get caught. And we're going to talk a little bit later about um, some of the ways to catch some of these errors. Um, but we know that, of course, that, that cancer is essentially this out-of-control um, cell growth. The division is going terribly wrong, um, and it's unregulated, and it forms um, what we consider to be a tumor. Um, until, in, in some cases, it's actually interrupting normal cell um, functioning and causes some health issues um, or death um, as a result of this. And we can kind of clearly see all these variations as we kind of do this comparison between the normal cells and then we have some um, clearly cancerous cells. And there's lots of things about kind of the number of cells and the size of them and, and the shape of them in some cases, the, the, the loss of function, of course, in cancer cells, the disorganization of those, um, and even the kind of boundaries of, of how, they're, how they're actually built. And so now what I'd like you to do is, is watch this short video um, about how um, uh, cancer cells are and kind of the genes associated with cancer cells.